thanks for checking out this video. I'll be going over the steps of the research process, how to find sources on the MVCC Library website, and effective search strategies to find sources successfully. Let's start off with the research process. The first step in the research process is to closely examine the assignment requirements. What's your professor expecting? If you have any questions about the assignment, be sure to clear up any confusion with your professor. After you understand what's expected of you, choose a topic. Try to choose a topic you feel strongly about. Don't pick a topic just because you think it's going to be easy to find information on. Pick something you have a personal connection to. Once you understand the objective and requirements of your project, and you have a topic in mind, the next step is to conduct background research. This will help you become familiar with your topic form opinions and arguments, and develop keywords to use when you start doing in-depth research. Usually students start with a broad topic that will need to be narrowed down. Before you narrow a broad topic, you'll need to get to know your topic better. Background research to get to know your topic better can take place in Google, dictionaries, encyclopedias, on the library website, or a textbook. Keep in mind a Wikipedia page is not considered an acceptable source to cite in your academic papers but encyclopedias are a good starting point to get oriented at the beginning of your research. In background research materials, you may find your topic is called something entirely different in the scientific or medical community from terms you would normally use. Background sources may also springboard you into other sources to get more in-depth information. You need to get a good foundational knowledge of a topic before diving into more critical pieces like scholarly journals or research studies. Otherwise, the more dense, critical pieces of research won't make sense and the information will be too overwhelming. Once you have background research, it's time to narrow them down into at least one focused, clear research question. Research questions serve as a guide for the kind of specific information you'll need to compile on your topic. A strong research question will focus and narrow your research and should generate interest by addressing an important issue. Some good examples of research questions include How do colleges respond to the rise in resident students requesting emotional support animals? What are implications of human genetic engineering? Could it lead to creating genetically privileged elite? What impact does the media have on children's perception of body image? How can this be mitigated? All these questions address an important issue and they can't be answered with a yes or no. And the answer to the questions is an arguable point. Keep in mind that your research question and position may change. As you research, you may find information that will cause you to adjust your initial perspective. Keep an open mind and stay flexible. Once you form some questions and have a specific information need, you'll be ready for more critical sources that will get more in depth with your focus and more substance than a textbook or encyclopedia article. The more media sources are articles from high profile newspapers like New York Times or Wall Street Journal, academically published books found in the library, and scholarly journal articles. These sources can be found on the library website, which we'll get to shortly. As you are searching for sources, you will always need to be evaluating your sources. I like using the craft tests. Question the currency relevance, authority, accuracy, and purpose of the article or book. Ask yourself, why was this source created? Who was it written for? What's the purpose? Does the author exhibit any bias? Is the author being paid by an organization that has a particular agenda? Is the information up to date? Is the information accurate? There's a lot of questions you should be wondering about as you evaluate your sources. Many of these questions are easily answered with sources on the library website, but harder to answer on the open web. But you should still be evaluating sources, even if you're finding them on the library website. Don't take everything you find as fact. The library subscribes to a variety of sources, and some of them are written by very liberal sources, and some are coming from very conservative organizations. Use your critical thinking skills and always evaluate your sources. Then, of course, there's the writing phase of the research paper. Throughout the research process, you should be keeping a detailed notes about your ideas, evaluation of sources, and where you got your information, and citation information. Different pre-writing strategies work for different people. Some people like outlining, others like cluster mapping, some like free writing. I always tell students to meet with a writing tutor at the beginning of your writing process to talk about your ideas and organize your thoughts. They'll help you narrow down a topic. Then when you have a draft, meet with them again. 
it's always helpful to get an objective opinion and another set of eyes to tell you if your ideas are being communicated in an effective manner. Make sure you're citing any outside sources. If you don't give credit to your sources, you'll be committing plagiarism, which can lead you to failing the assignment and possibly more serious consequences. If you don't know how to cite, ask a writing tutor or a librarian. There are also citation guides in the Library and Writing Lab website. Your professor is expecting you to analyze scholarly sources in your argumentative paper. Scholarly sources are not typically found through Google. Google Scholar is a good option, but you may run into paywalls preventing you from accessing full articles. The library website is the best place to go for scholarly research. To get to the library website from the MVCC homepage, select Academics and Libraries. A good place to start your research is the main search box on the library homepage. It will search a number of databases once. It doesn't search everything though, but it's a good place to start. Let's say you're interested in the topic of emotional support animals. Just press enter or search and a list of results will appear. If you get zero results, make sure you're using only keywords, not sentences, and your keywords are spelled correctly. These sources are coming from a variety of source types. You'll be getting scholarly, peer-reviewed journal articles, ebooks, physical book records, newspaper articles, and more. Different source types are more useful at different stages of your research. For example, ebooks or reference entries are more helpful at the beginning of your research when scholarly peer-reviewed sources are more useful towards the end of your, the research process when you're looking for more specific research studies. You can narrow results in a variety of ways. For example, if you're looking for a book, you can go to Material Type and select Books. This will bring up both physical book records located in the library and electronic books available online. If you're looking for scholarly peer-reviewed articles, you can select peer-reviewed journals. You can also limit down by when the source was published by selecting a date range. So for example, if you're looking for articles published in the last 10 years, you can choose the date range and select refine. All of your search limiters will be located at the top on the left-hand side, and if you want to delete any of them, you can always select the X. You can also refine your results by adding more keywords and connecting your keywords in a meaningful way, such as using and or the word or. Perhaps I'm interested in how colleges are dealing with the issue of students wanting to bring emotional support animals on campus. I can add college or university or campus. Press enter and this will narrow down my results. When you find something that's interesting to you, you can select title. If you selected an item that's available online, a list of databases that are containing that source will appear. If you scroll down, you may also get a description or an abstract of the article. This summary will give you a better idea if the source is worth your time reading into further. If it does seem relevant, select one of the databases to be connected to the article. Now if you're off campus, you will be asked to sign in. Sign in with the same login information you use for MVCC email, campus computers, or Blackboard. Once you get signed in, you'll see Again, more information about the article, the abstract or summary, and you can select PDF full text to view the actual article. Here, you can download your article, print it off, save it to a Google account, email it to yourself, and this is a very helpful button. This is the citation button. If you think you might use this for your paper, it's a good idea to save the citation because you're not gonna wanna track down the citation at the last minute or try to cre recreate the citation yourself. So it saves you a lot of time to keep track of your citations. So what I usually do is I copy and paste the citation in a Word document or a Google Doc or in an email to myself. Now remember you're in English class and English classes use the MLA style. So make sure you're copy and pasting the correct citation style. You do need to proof the read these citations because they are made by machines and they're only as good as the data that's fed into them. Errors in these citations are not uncommon, but it's nice to have something to start with. 
After you're done searching in with that main search box, it's also a good idea to check out the databases. That main search box searches a lot of different databases at, at once, but it doesn't search everything. So it's a good idea to expand your search and look in different databases too. Academic OneFile, Academic Search Complete, those are both really good for a variety of topics. You can also use this All Subjects drop-down menu to select a certain subject that databases specialize in. So if your topic has something to do with psychology, you can select Human Services to be directed to databases that specialize in psychology or human services topics. Same thing for criminal justice or history or literature. If you're looking for some ideas on controversial topics, opposing viewpoints and context is a good database to use, or issues and controversies. Now this class is special because it has a research guide available to it. To get to a research guide, go back to the home page, select research guides, and find your class. Just click in the empty box, select English courses, and go. Hover over English 101 and find your instructor. This guide will have a collection of relevant databases, an embedded library search box, and a collection of relevant guides to help you with your research process. And don't hesitate to contact me if you get stuck in the research process or need help with your citations. Hang in there and good luck!